For this exercise, a grid has been drawn diagonally every four inches. Once your grid is drawn out on your fabric, you can now begin using your straight edge ruler to stitch the grid. Don't stitch just a square at a time. Stitch the entire piece that you're making. It will make this so much easier for you. Remember, place your ruler a quarter of an inch away from the line so that when you're stitching, it is actually stitching on the marked line. The next step is to divide and conquer. We're going to take adjoining squares in a row, not in a checkerboard, but in a row. And we're going to divide each of these areas so that we can later put fill stitches in. And that's what's going to create the shadows that you see in quilting. Looking at this grid in figure A, you can see that there is a boomerang type shape that begins and ends in the upper and lower quadrant of the diamond, but it's in about an inch from the side. You're going to do that on one side and then turn it around and do it again in the opposite side like shown in B. When you get done doing that, repeat one more time for C and D. Now let's begin to stitch out your grid. I'm showing you on my ruler that there is a mark that I can use putting it on the, the side of my diamond. We'll put my stitches one inch out exactly where I want them. So I don't have to draw the grid onto my fabric. I can use my ruler instead. And when I get to the midpoint of the diamond, I turn it around, keeping my end of the ruler a quarter of an inch away from where I want it to be. It'll stitch down into the point. Now we're ready to stitch the second boomerang on this side of the diamond. Again, we're going to keep that one inch mark away from where we want the inch to be, like we had on our grid. We're going to go to that center mark and then stitch all the way back up to the corner, or I'm sorry, to the top pivot point. At this point, we're ready to work down our opposite direction. Now you notice before we had the ruler to the back of the foot, but since we're working in another direction, we now have to move it on the front part of the foot. Again, we're keeping that ruler one inch away by using the markings on our ruler grid. And now we're going back down to the bottom pivot point. One more time, we're going to place the ruler so that the inch mark on the ruler is where the last pivot point was on the side. We're going to stitch up to that. We're going to stop. We're going to pivot and back up to the top pivot point. I think you can already see our designs are starting to puff up a little bit, and that's what we're going for. We want poof in our quilt. After you have completed all your stitching, this is what the top is going to look like. Once you have stitched all your diamond grids on your piece of fabric, you're now ready to decide what you're going to put in those different places to complete your diamonds. What you're looking for is some type of design that will compress your batting in some spots while allowing the rest of the area to poof up. That's what gives you your highs and lows in the quilt and what makes it really look good. So here I've practiced a little bit with wishbones and I'm gonna do a little practice with pebbles. You notice with the pebbles, it just goes around and then you have to backtrack around those pebbles. 
right now I'm going a little slower than I knew, normally do when I'm doing this size pebble. You'll see as I start to pick up, my backtracking gets a little bit better because it's a smoother movement for me. And you can do this at whatever speed is more comfortable for you. And you'll notice whenever I'm doing this on the video that mine aren't perfect either. But when you're doing these whole cloth, you're going to stitch in the same color as your fabric. So that's very, very forgiving. Don't forget that. Now that our grid is all stitched out on our quilt, we've done our practice as far as what kind of fill we want to do. Now it's time to put that practice to use. Here's the wishbone stitch being put in the center of the diamond. You notice I'm not really hitting the line and I'm doing that deliberate because I want the line to show a little bit of a shadow, but that's totally your choice with however you want to do that. Try to keep your wishbones as straight up and down as you can by keeping your fabric straight. That'll keep them from being too slanted as you're stitching them. If you can keep your speed up as you're stitching them, you'll find that they'll stitch out a little bit smoother, but you stitch at the speed that you're comfortable with. The hardest part is just going from very, very tiny to very, very large and back down again. Now we're ready to do the other fill that we decided on. Now make sure that you don't go into the inner boomerang, but that you're stitching on the outer part. That'll push the inner boomerang out and give that some puffiness. And remember, that's what we're going for. We're trying to make some shadows and we're trying to make some highlights on this quilt. And by doing these stitches, it pushes the batting down, allowing the rest of the quilt to poof up. And that's what's going to really catch the light. So continue on doing these. Get all your diamond panels stitched up and then we'll go on to our next step. Well by now I think you know that it's all about the poof. Everybody likes to see those lofty looking quilts with with the quilting showing so pretty. Here's another way we're going to accomplish this. We're going to accentuate these diamond panels we just did by stitching a quarter of an inch around each one of them. You'll be amazed. Adding quarter inch borders is very simple because your needle is exactly one quarter of an inch away from the edge of the ruler. All you have to do is place that edge of your ruler right up against the previously stitched line and voila, you get a quarter of an inch border without even breaking a sweat. And you'll really be amazed how much this little border can make on your overall look of your quilt. Even though this is just a practice piece that I'm demonstrating on, I think you can see how adding that quarter inch border really makes the centers poof out. That's what we're looking for. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is divide and conquer again. We're going to take those inner squares that are formed between the diamonds and we're going to divide those in half one way and half the other way, forming a big X in the middle, just like it's shown on the diagram. I had previously marked the center line positions so I would have a guide to stitch against when I'm using my ruler here. So I've gone down one half of the square so that I don't have to break thread and tie off and then rejoin again. I'm just going to use the ruler, follow the previous stitching line to get around to my next mark. And then I'm going to stitch back up to divide 
the square in half. At this point, I'm going to begin to stitch cathedral windows. And it's just a sort of an oval, half an oval on each side. And if you just track it around like this, you won't have to, again, you won't have to break thread. It's a very easy stitch to do on the machine. Just take your time and enjoy. I know this is a lot of repetition for some folks, but some people do like to watch other folks quilt. So I'm just going to go ahead and instead of speeding this up, I'm just going to go ahead and let it run out. For those of you who have never done a cathedral window or need a brush up on how to do it, I'll let this tape roll. While you're watching this part of the tape, I did want to let you know that this is being done on the thinnest batting that you can possibly get. It's quarter inch poly, very cheap batting, but you can see there's still a lot of loft. So it's not the batting, it's the quilting that makes the quilt. I guess that's why they have that old saying. The only thing left to do now is to do the feathers in the triangles. I'm going to start out with a center point line, just as a guide. And if you remember the video about the feathers, there's our bird's wing, there's going around the sun and coming back home again. That was the ABCs of feathers, but these are bump feathers. So now there's my bird wing, around the sun part way, back around again. These make really nice full feathers if, for free form if that's what you're looking to do. Now we're going to repeat the same thing on the other side. There's our bird's wing going around the sun. For those who haven't seen this ABCs of feathers, you have no idea what I'm talking about, but make sure that you look up that if you have trouble with feathers. It, it shows you an easy way to make them and to think about it as you're, you're making your feathers. Now we're going to make a center plume at the top. And then we're going to travel back down again and our feathers done. And we're going to repeat that in all the triangles on the outside edge. Okay, we've broken this down. You now know how to do the diamonds with the boomerangs and the fills. You know how to do the cathedral windows and the in-between squares. You know how to do the quarter inch trim around all the blocks. So give it a shot. If you try to make this, please show me pictures. I'd love to see it. Have fun.